So it's been nice to be able to build those relationships and have those experiences with everybody. So this bunk room is the entire reason that I wanted this rig. I mean, this is our living room right here. Welcome to our living room. The length of this on paper is 33 feet. Hey guys, we're the Flippin' Tilbies. I'm Renee, this is Sean, we have Mason, Levi, Lincoln, and Jesse, and we also have our daughter, Audrey, who's not here today. This is our Jayco trailer, and we renovated the entire inside. This is the first renovation that we did, and since then, we've actually made a business out of renovating RVs. It's a ton of fun, and we really, really enjoy it. We've been living in this rig for about three years, but we've been full-time RVing for about four. Um, come on inside, and we'll show you around. So this is a Jayco J-Flight 33 RBTS, and we bought this rig sight unseen from an insurance auction. Or when we first saw it online, I knew that I wanted it because it has the four bed bunkhouse in the back, and also has a huge pantry over here. But it took forever for it to go up, and we didn't think we were gonna be able to get it. When we got it, it actually had been vandalized, and there was spray paint everywhere, and it was really, really gross. We had been flipping RVs at this point for about four years, but we'd never renovated the interior. And so I hopped online, I had no idea people did this, and of course they do and we got really, really excited about turning this really gross and vandalized RV into a beautiful tiny home for us. So I have the pantry and then the kitchen and we also had a teeny little normal RV stove in here and I was the one who wanted to do full-time RV living and my husband didn't and he really, one of his must-haves was a full-size stove. So he wanted one because he makes massive breakfasts and we also really love Papa Murphy's and you can't cook those in a regular RV size um, stove. And then we had this like weird space left over from when we ripped out the old stove and Sean built this beautiful spice rack. It's probably my favorite thing about our entire RV is that I can have all of my spices that we had in our re regular sticks and bricks and it's right next to our stove. We also, when we were putting, renovating this, we put in as big of an island as we possibly could in here. We were like walking through to make sure that our walk was big enough and to see how big we could make it be. And we love it, like it's huge. We can put a bunch of stools here for the kids to eat and do school. And we put a huge sink and we still have a ton of counter space. We got this sink at Ikea, we got this faucet from Amazon, and I was not sure I would like the black, but I actually really love it, and it doesn't show as much as I thought that it would be. And I love having the single basin because it makes it a lot easier to be able to wash things in there. Um, and then the other things we have, we have the normal microwave, we have just storage up in there, and then we do just have like a normal size fridge, RV fridge, and for all seven of us, it's a little bit tight, but we just do Tetris every single time that we go grocery shopping, and it works out just fine. This is our dining area. This is, table here is from Ikea, and it has two leaves that fold up, and so when we all wanna eat around the table inside, we'll just rotate this, flop the other leaf up, and then we can all sit around this. But most of the time, we actually just eat outside. One of the reasons we love this lifestyle is that we can be outside a lot, and that's one of the ways that we love doing that is having dinner outside. But sometimes that's not always feasible, so we do love having this table and the options of turning it sideways and adding a bunch more space. We also have storage in here as well. There's storage doors here, and then on the back side, so the stuff that I don't want the kids getting to, I just on the back side over there and then Sean built this amazing bench here and it also has a ton of storage we keep a lot of our um, seasonal items in there jackets flippers for snorkeling and things like that and then the kids all like playing the ukulele so we do have that there and that does get used a ton this is our living room. We actually got this couch from Walmart. It's a futon, so it does lay down. And then our five-year-old actually sleeps on here. We have the bunk room in the back that sleeps four. And then Jesse sleeps on here when he's not in bed with us, um, kind of co-sleeping hippies over here. But this does fold down all the way. And then when we do like family movie night and things like that, we just all pile on there between here and the bench over in the dining area. And it works really, really great. Also, it's raised up a little bit off of the floor, so there's tons of storage space. We just have like some bins from Ikea, and we just fit so much stuff under there. We also keep his bedding under there as well. And then over here, we have a Berkey's Priorities um, because we're going from RV park to RV park, and we don't know the quality of the water. It's so nice for us to be able to have filtered water wherever we go. And then for a while, we didn't have a TV. We just watch on our laptops, but uh, Sean did talk me into getting a TV, and it actually has really been nice. And then underneath here, we keep a lot of storage for the kids' school. Um, we have games that are there. We have a lot of books for being RVers. We probably hold on to a lot more than we probably should. Um, and yeah, it's just a really comfortable space. We're able to fit a lot into this, but we really like it, and we do hang out right in this area quite a lot. One of the main reasons we did choose this lifestyle was honestly because of the kids, not in spite of them. A lot of times people will say, why don't you do this when you're retired? Why don't you do this when your kids are older? All these things. But honestly, we wanted to be able to have this time to spend quality time with them while they are young and be able to show them as many experiences as possible. Um, before we chose this lifestyle, Sean was working a really traditional job, 
when he was home, he was really tired, and he really wanted to be able to have more quality time with the kids. It's one of the reasons we chose to do this. Yeah, it was it was hard seeing you know all the things that I'd missed, and sure, I was just gone during the day or whatever. But um, this guy was about six months old when we decided on this lifestyle, and um, I definitely say that I am the closest with him, just because I've had his whole life being around, being a part of the family. Whereas he's, I guess I shouldn't say closest with him, but he is more of a daddy's boy than the rest of them because the rest of them had mom. Mom was always there while I was at work. Um, so it's been nice to be able to build those relationships and have those experiences with everybody. Um, and logistically, you know, there's seven of us. It's a 37 foot trailer where it's like what, 300 square feet in there. Uh, 360, 360. Levi had to do that for one of his homeschool projects. He had to measure the square footage of the RV. Um, and really, we chose this lifestyle to be able to spend a lot of time with each other, but also outside and enjoy nature. So, I mean, this is our living room right here. Welcome to our living room. It's just an extension of our living space. You know, we have the toys over there for the kids. They play out here. We do homeschool out here. Um, we usually, pretty much every RV park we're at is going to have some sort of picnic table. We're going to be doing dinner out there more times than not. We almost never use the table in there for like a full family dinner. We'll use the picnic tables on the outside. Um, and so I think the biggest, the hardest thing about living in a trailer with this many people is definitely the bathroom. One bathroom <laughs> is tough. So if you're going to do it, that's one thing in our next rig that we get, we will definitely have at least a, an extra half bath. A second toilet is like the, the shower is not a problem. We can make that work, um, but the extra toilet would be nice. But yeah, we always like to say that our living space is tiny, but our backyard is huge. Yep, it's That's the whole That's kind world. of our favorite favorite line to share. The best part is our backyard changes all the time. So we don't like our backyard today. We go change it and do something different about it for tomorrow. So it's been super fun. When we got this RV, it came with a teeny little coat closet. It was like this big. And I knew that wasn't gonna work for our family of seven. And so I saw something like this on Pinterest that I fell in love with. Sean was really busy though. And so I actually cranked it out myself and I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. We use a lot of coats and things like that, sweatshirts. So it's pretty much usually way more full than this, uh, but it really is nice to have somewhere to hang our coats, hang our backpacks and things like that. And it, I feel like it really adds a lot of character to this whole space in here. And then I really wanted some pictures above it. So I got these like plexiglass uh, frames. I got them at Michael's for like a buck each. And and then just hung some pictures of the kids and we just used like some Velcro, it's like 3M um, strips to hang those up and so we can pull them down if we need to and it makes it super easy. And it's a really cheap, easy way of decorating a small space in our rig. In this bathroom, we were super happy with the size of it. We were a family of seven, so we definitely needed a bathroom that has a decent size in it. We also put a really great um, towel rack right here, and we'd use the Turkish towels because it saves a, a lot of space on there. The kids sometimes still like the traditional ones, but most of our towels are these Turkish towels. And then Sean put a beautiful rack there for us to hang those. And then in here, we didn't do a ton of changes, mostly just like cosmetic upgrades, the basic layout that we got the RV in. But we knew we wanted a bigger sink. Our last rig that we lived in had a teeny sink, and it was super raised up like a basin one. It was very hard for the kids to brush their teeth. So we wanted a big one so that um, two kids could maybe brush their teeth at the same time. And when they were spitting, they weren't getting all over the place. We did get an upgraded faucet as well. I think we've got both of those on Amazon, um, good old Amazon. And then the wallpaper, we just wanted something to kind of give a little bit more interest in here because we didn't have anything. We actually just put that up a few months ago. And I think I got that at, at Target is where I got that wallpaper, just peel and stick. And so far so good. It's holding up pretty great. All right, and then the shower over here, we actually keep our laundry in here because most RVs don't have a good place to put our or put laundry at. So it lives in the shower until we move it out for when we shower and then it goes back in. We have about a 20 gallon freshwater tank capacity on here and we do boondock quite a bit, um, but we've gotten really good at being able to ration our showers and being able to, we have like the little switch off on our faucet. So we're able to take a lot of showers and boondock for, I think we've done the six to seven days we've been able to boondock and not run out of water on there. So it is just one bathroom and there are seven of us. So it does create some logistic problems every once in a while, especially when we wake up first thing in the morning. But thank goodness, most of the people who live in here are boys. So we just have one girl and four boys. And so sometimes nature is the bathroom. A lot of times we are in campgrounds, we're able to use their facilities, um, but sometimes we do just fertilize the trees. Uh, we definitely have a line most mornings, but people are pretty good about making sure they're moving out of it quickly. And then we do showers on different days or different times of the day. So for the most 
most part it works out. Every once in a while there's massive fights, but we've, we've been doing this for four years and we've gotten pretty good at it. All right, here in the master bedroom, we've done a few things to be able to make it so that it has better storage solutions. This style of primary bedroom, they really don't have great storage solutions. You have to lift up the entire bed to access any of it. So we put some drawers on the sides of each one of the beds, one on Sean's side and one on my side, so we can put all our folded laundry in there. And it makes it a lot easier to access our clothes on a daily basis. We do have these right here, but they're obviously stuffed full with all seven of our hanging clothes. So we do keep all of our day-to-day -day clothes in those. And then I love my oils. Sean made me this beautiful oil rack. It has has inset spots so that the oil set in there so they actually they stay during a travel day none of them fall out thank goodness and then on the headboard right here we got some quarter inch underlayment that we put a urethane finish on I just wanted something that made it feel like really nice and cozy in here I kind of like the mid-century cabin vibes happening that's kind of what I was going for but in a really subtle way and we don't need a ton of stuff in our room we got to keep it super simple and make it feel like a really enjoyable and restful space so this bunk room is the entire reason that I wanted this rig. It has four beds in here. It's fantastic. There's not a lot of RVs that have bunk houses that actually sleep four kids. So we really, really wanted this one. And when we got it, actually, these two bunks were completely ripped out. So we rebuilt them, which was fantastic, though, because we were able to customize them to what we wanted. And we were able to put this fantastic storage underneath it. We have two cubby sections. And then we also have a massive underbed storage drawer that we're able to have both Masons and Levi's clothes in that one. And on the other side, there's two other drawers for the other kids' clothes as well. And then Audrey has a big cabinet on the back side of hers where she keeps all of her clothing. And then each one of the kids has a Ikea storage organizer. They're able to put all their stuff and just like toys, knickknacks and things like that they wanna keep. And then we also have a lot of their stuff in the cubby holes underneath the beds here. And then we do have quite a bit of storage behind here as well. We have a lot of school books, we homeschool. So each one of the kids has a little cubby like this for all of their school that they're working on currently. That one's Levi's there. And then we do have have more school stuff down here and different like uh, different novels and books like that as well because we do read a ton we actually will rotate these out though we have a storage unit in Utah so whenever we're in town we drop off all the ones we finished reading and then get a whole new batch of new ones so that we can always have real books to read on a regular basis so this was the original coat closet in the RV and it's pretty small for coats for a family of our size. So I had a great idea of turning it into a shoe closet. Um, even though we are pretty much minimalists, we do have a fair amount of shoes for all seven of us. So Sean got this over the door shoe organizer from Walmart and then he cut it down and Jerry rigged it, did his magic. And we can actually fit, I think, upwards of 20 shoes in here when we have it organized. And when a lot of them are little kids, the little boys' shoes as well. And then the bottom, we have our little Dyson vacuum cleaner. And Sean rigged it so that the charger goes up and into through here so that we can actually charge it from that location as well. As long as the kids don't unplug it from the charging port, we're good. And he made sure that we had the space for that on there. And we just really love this. It makes so you can walk in, put your dirty shoes in there, and it doesn't clutter up this entire space here with shoes even though half the time we still do have a million shoes there, at least gives them a place to go. And that's something super important with living in any tiny space is everything at least needs to have a space. My grandpa used to say a place for everything and everything in its place, but honestly with five kids, everything's not gonna be its place, but at least have a place to go when we do do a cleanup. When we first started doing the full-time RV lifestyle, we probably had a half-baked idea. It probably wasn't the best idea of how we were gonna make money. So when we first did it, we were, we went out to California and we helped my sister build her house and we also were flipping houses. So we would go to the place where the house was at, we'd renovate it, and then we would travel in between. Um, and then we decided we wanted something that moves around a little bit more than houses, flipping houses. So that's when we, well, we, we were doing it before. Yeah. So then we started moving into renovating the RVs. So after we'd renovated this one, we were doing that at the same time we were flipping houses. And so I was like, you know, it's a lot easier to buy trailers than it is to buy houses and way less riskier. So then we just kind of pivoted our money-making idea from flipping houses to flipping um, RVs and renovating them. So we just, it kind of took off. Then 2020 hit and we did a bunch then. We didn't have anything else to do. We flipped a bunch of trailers and um, really have enjoyed flipping or renovating. It's been a lot of fun. Uh, but it is a lot of physical work. So we also create content for brands. We've worked with Camping World, Thor Industries, Togo RV. Uh, we write blog posts, we do photography, um, we've done a little bit of videography for that as well. Um, and we just kind of ask people if they want to work with us and get ballsy and 
We honestly, our, our motto with making money is fit making money around what we love instead of fitting what we love around making money. All right, welcome to the outside of our rig. This is a 2016 Jayco J Flight 33 RBTS. I believe the RBTS stands for rear bunk triple slide. So we have the bunkhouse in the back as Renee showed earlier, and it's got three slide outs. We have one on this side, two on the opposite side. The length of this on paper is 33 feet, but overall length from the tip of the tongue to the very back of our bike rack is almost 40 feet. Um, so it's really long for a travel trailer. I never thought I'd ever have a travel trailer this long, but it is, and that's where we're at. So we want to go back to a fifth wheel. This has worked great for us for three and a half years. So outside here, we have the cooking area. This is one of my favorite parts about this lifestyle is that I get to be outside. I get to cook outside. We're able to get this Blackstone grill from Camping World and it really has been awesome. It's got a barbecue box, it's got a griddle, but then I keep the griddle off most of the time because we have cast iron pans that we use for kind of everything. This is kind of our homey space. We love the rug, we love the chairs, we love just sitting outside. Sun's not really going down, but it's a, a perfect time of day to be in the shade and just relax and, and just have a lot of family time. They're inside getting dinner made, but you know, that's another great part is we have everything that we need right here. Everything totally in one unit and we just love that. Okay, so right here, this is what they call an outdoor kitchen. We have adapted it to be more beneficial for our full-time lifestyle. Um, when we first got this unit, this is one of about two areas in the trailer that wasn't touched at all. So this and then the bathroom were the two areas that were still in factory condition, essentially. The countertop used to be up about this high. There was one drawer and then a sink. Well, the sink was basically too high for anybody except for me to use. Um, none of my kids were ever gonna be able to use it, so it didn't make any sense to keep that. And then the drawer was kind of useless, a ton of wasted space. So we tore that out, reinstalled a new countertop down at this height here, just to utilize all the space the best that we possibly could. We have um, storage shelves here for, you know, nothing else other than Otter Pops. This is a lot of our excess food storage. Um, this is our picnic blanket. We have our paddleboard here, the wagon for when we want to take everything down to the beach. Um, we got a mini fridge that holds kind of, again, just the excess stuff that we can't fit because our fridge inside is really small. For a family of seven, every time we go to the grocery store, I'm always amazed that we're able to get it all in. And then, of course, I have to have some tools with me. Um, a lot of my bigger tools I store up in the front storage compartment, but this is more of like the everyday type of stuff. We've got screwdrivers, drills, um, wrenches, pliers, all of that kind of stuff. Super handy, super accessible. And then we keep all of the other tools and paint touch up and all of that kind of stuff here. Um, up here was a little bit of wasted space. So we actually got, um, it's multi-purpose. So we have a skim board here that we can take down and play on the water. And um, we got that when we were in California playing on the beach, but it also doubles as a shelf. So it gives us upper storage as well. We're just trying to utilize as much space as possible. Very important when you have a travel trailer, they don't usually come with a whole lot of storage space. Um, so back here, we just recently got this Velocirax bike rack. We were looking for something that could hold all seven of our bikes for the longest time. We had a four bike rack on here, um, but I was just using a receiver that was attached to the bumper and I didn't like that. I've been a welder. I built a lot of things. Well, um, about six months ago, our bumper decided to uh, go for a skid down the freeway with all of our bikes. It wiped out two of our bikes and it happened, I don't know, 11 o'clock at night. One of the latest travel days we've ever had. We never travel that late. So um, in turn, I, I had a family member that was coming to visit that area and he brought me a welder. I was able to get all the steel that I needed. And while we were down in Palm Springs, California, I built a whole new bumper with the receiver and everything. So now the bumper is thicker, it's heavier duty than comes from a manufacturer. It's tied into the frame, but then the receiver goes underneath. Once I had that done, I knew I was okay and it was gonna be strong enough to go to a heavier bike rack. So the one thing that we've added over on this side of the trailer, which, you know, there's not a whole lot happening. All the, all the fun stuff happens on that side. This is actually the less fun side because this is where you dump the sewer tanks. But because of that, we added this five inch vinyl fence post. So that's all it is from Home Depot, a vinyl fence post. We put some big hose clamps on there that hold it to the frame, keep it nice and solid. It just has a quick, easy pin design that I figured out myself. And then the hoses slide inside here and 
it just makes it so we don't have to put stinky hoses inside the trailer. Um, so that was a good addition. This here is the only other outside storage that we have. This is a pass through all the way to the other side. So it gives us a lot of space, but I have a lot of my heavier stuff up here because I put a big heavy bike rack with seven bikes on the back. So I have like my jack and all my heavy tools, all of our extra power cords, extension cords. We put all of our blocks, everything like that for stabilization up here. We have another container here for our sewer attachments when we're dumping our tanks. And then up inside also, right along the front, it's a, a weird slant angle, but we designed a few things so that we can utilize the space the best as possible. So we have a shovel, a full size shovel up there. Something that I found whenever we're boondocking is a lot of times in the mountains, you can't find a level spot and you can't get enough blocks to make it level. So the best thing that I found to do is to actually dig a hole and then back your tires on whatever is the high side into that hole. I don't know how, but somehow magically it always works out perfectly. Whatever hole you dig, it gets your trailer perfectly level. It's awesome. And then not only that, you don't really have to chalk the wheels because it can't really go anywhere. Anybody that is thinking about doing this with kids, don't hold off because you have kids. It's such a great experience. It's so much more fun. We, we would definitely recommend it for anybody. And they still get all the things. They have friends. We, we meet up with our friends on a regular basis. We have what we call our road family, people we've met and we just really love and we meet up with them. The kids meet new friends at every RV park and we're, we're driving to places to meet up with our old friends. They play sports. Most places have pickleball. They'll play sports. A paddle boards, we're, we're at the lake right now. Um, the sports just look different and friends just look different than they would in a traditional life. So it's not, they're not missing out on any of those opportunities. Those opportunities are actually richer. Thank you guys so much for coming for a tour of our trailer, our home, our um, tiny home on wheels, whatever you want to call it. We really enjoy it. We love it. It's been a great, a great home for us for three years and this lifestyle has been great for us for the last almost, what, five years? Four yep. and a half, almost five. Four and a half five. years we're going up on. If you'd like to follow us, you can follow us at The Flippin' Tildes. We're on YouTube, Instagram, TikTok, all the socials. And we also have a website, which is theflippintilbies.com. And we'd love to have you guys follow along with all of our journeys. And just a reminder, that's The Flippin' Tilbies. No G. No G. F-L-I-P-P-I-N. Yep. The Flippin' Tilbies. Tilbies.com. Thanks so much for watching, guys. We appreciate it. See you down the road.